Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone out there in YouTube land or wherever this study finds you. I'm Luann Ash, and this is my channel. And we are starting our New Year's uh, study of Isaiah Part 2, beginning with Chapter 40 and moving through the 66 rest of the chapters. So just hang on a minute and I will introduce the rest of our friends into the class. Be right back. Well, here we go. We had a little bit of technical challenges going on. <laughs> uh, we just will keep on going in spite of spiritual and technological warfare. <laughs> and as I said, we are beginning our part two of Isaiah, as you saw in the opening screens, and we're happy that you've joined us here. Uh, this time, there's only three of us studying, and towards the end of this study, we're going to have a dropout, too, who has to go to work <laughs> most, most mornings uh, during tax season. So anyway, um, that all being said, um, let's pray and get started. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for guarding us, for keeping us, for warning us, for showing us the paths of righteousness. Thank you for providing for us all the things that we need to live a life that is godly and righteous. Help us to be always listening to your voice, um, exulting and rejoicing in who you are and as you reveal yourself in this book of Isaiah and help us to call out to the lost who do not understand that judgment is coming and that all who are on the earth will see it together at the time of it coming. <clears throat> so Father God, direct us, help us to review what we've already learned and help us to see great and wonderful things from your word this morning, this afternoon, this evening, wherever our friends are. In Jesus' precious name, amen. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So I've got the, <laughs> I've got this cough going on. I'm sorry. I hope it doesn't blast your ears out. I'll try to be careful. All right. So uh, as is always the way, we review what we have learned up to this point. But before we do our review, I just want to check in and see if there was anything in Isaiah 40 and 41 that especially spoke to anybody. And I'm going to mute for a minute while I cough. Of course, we have to go back to our notes, which is what Bob is doing. I must say, too, that our teacher mentor, director, uh, Jane Hart, suggested that in our Bibles, <clears throat> in our study Bibles, <clears throat> and it's better to put it there than on, an, on your um, observation worksheet, which is separate, and you don't carry with you when you carry your Bible. <clears throat> Anything that you learn about God, lessons for life, um, particular things. So the study Bibles are wide enough that, you know, the margins, are, ouch, sorry, are wide enough that you can do this. You were going to say something, Bob? Well, in, in 41, verse 14, uh, he calls Jacob a worm. And what did do you not take fear, from you worm, Jacob. Oh, a worm is not a, a person of good quality or character. Mm. So, but God chose him anyways. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do not fear, you worm Jacob, you men of Israel. I will help you, declares the Lord, and your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. <clears throat> you have any thoughts uh, on any parts of this week's study, Adrian. I know that you were you expressed to me that you were finding it was a real struggle, a bit confusing. Yeah, it was a bit confusing. Mm -hmm. It was a real struggle. Um, 
Especially when you got, but it was more enlightening when you got to the cross references. Ah. Because I could see how they, um, how the Old Testament and the New Testament became, came together mm -hmm. better. Mm -hmm. Especially Isaiah. Yeah, very good. So yesterday was Sunday where we are, and uh, I was in a small little church, and the pastor <clears throat> was reminding us that <clears throat> when the apostles of the New Testament were preaching, they preached entirely from the Old Testament scriptures. And so, you know, it's very important for us to be studying this from the Old Testament. Anything else anybody wants to say? The whole theme seemed to change. Okay, good. Um, it, it was all judgment and righteousness and judgment in the previous chapters. And now it's a new voice calling in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Yes, a, new, a different word, a different message, right? Very good. Yeah. I think for me, um, the lesson for life that I was writing down, and I was writing it down in that book that we made, Adrian, when we were studying Psalms um, about God, things that you learn about God, and there were yes. an awful lot of things to write down in here. So we are going to cover that topic um, as we go along today. Good work. Okay, so now um, let's, <clears throat> excuse me, do you have your um at a glance charts at hand because mm. i would like to review for the people who did not come along with us in isaiah part one um what we learned thus far in isaiah just no, in i general, don't have not... mine handy but okay i can write in the back of my bible oh yeah let me I got it, but I just gotta find it. <laughs> okay, so here's one thing you know. We're probably gonna use that at a glance chart quite often. So <laughs> have it with you when we come to the table. That's a good idea. I was just writing the chapter themes on my in my on right at the chapter. Mm -hmm. I forget to use the at a glance. <laughs> well, yeah, okay. Well, so look through your Bible. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's not go chapter by chapter let's go by uh segment by segment because remember <laughs> excuse me we did have segments that we were <laughs> examining oh yes i'm trying to remember them all well first five chapters was an introduction yeah. about israel and jacob and jerusalem are there any time references in there? Uh, well, chapter one is the reign of Uzziah. Okay, King Uzziah. Mm -hmm. Good. And then um, and, in uh, verse... What? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Adrian. I but in verse 18, it comes, it says, come now, let us reason together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which was another time phrase. So as you said, Bob, what is what is being spoken of in the first five chapters oh the coming judgment for judah and jerusalem mm -hmm. and the nations around them mm -hmm. and well, what was the judgment coming mainly on for go ahead because they were uh, not obedient to the uh, instructions of the lord and what particular things were happening that were so noxious that the Lord sent judgment? Or was about to send judgment? Well, I, I, idolatry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So did anybody think about what idolatry is? If, if we had to look, <clears throat> if we had to look our world today, um, how would we observe idolatry? Anything we put above God. Anything or anyone. Okay. So what could that be in, in our age, Adrian? 
Oh, it could be our pastor. It could be our computers. It could be, um, it could be anything. Really, M money, money, fame. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. So, <clears throat> what did God call the people to do, uh, um, as a result of this? Judgment he basically called them to repent. Yes. And in, and verse, 13, in, verse, and in verse 13 of chapter 5, it tells them to go into exile. Oh, that he's t sending them into exile. It that says, therefore, of... my people go into exile. Yeah, because he's sending them. That's one of their punishments. So, <laughs> so what does it mean to repent? If you could say it simply to a child. Confess and do no more. <laughs> confess what, though? Confess your sin, confess what you did wrong, and don't do it again. Yeah, change your mind. Yeah. <clears throat> it's a change of mind, a change of direction. Repentance is a change of, of direction. <clears throat> Some time ago, I learned that uh, repentance is agreeing with God and what he said and adjusting your attitude and your actions to show that agreement. What would you say, Bob? Well, that's pretty good. Okay, so um, <clears throat> whose reigns of uh, the kings were uh, covered during Isaiah's prophecy? You already mentioned uh, one. Here's Isaiah, um, Ahaz, mm -hmm. Jotham, and, Hez and Hezekiah. Mm -hmm, good. <coughs> Excuse me. So our study ended up with Hezekiah. So mm -hmm. that was in Isaiah 39. And I noticed on my at-a-glance sheet that I have here, online that I was making up as we were going, I did not write in a theme for 39. No, which of course, not. yeah, so which, of, and I think we just probably just missed doing that. Um, of course, nothing stands apart from any, anything, right? So we came to the end of 39 and what had happened there? In 39, the uh, king of Babylon come and visited, and, and uh, Hezekiah showed them the whole treasury of, of Israel, Jerusalem, and the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Was that a smart thing to do? No. No. We talked about that when the time that I did that. That's a very First, prideful thing. At, to at do. the end of the chapter, it talks about um, God telling him that he, everything will go to Babylon. Okay, so let me put this in here because uh, 39. <clears throat> so, um, uh, Babylon's future king, let's say. Because it was the son of Baladin, king of, of Babylon, right? <clears throat> okay, I'm going to say visits Hezekiah. <clears throat> who, who shows him all his treasures, right? Now we learned at the end, remember we're always marking time phrases, right? Time references. So in verse six, what does God warn?
You already said it, Adrian. And all that he, all that the Hezekiah's fathers, all that is in his house, and all that Hezekiah's fathers have laid up in store would be going carried to get Babylon, and and nothing will be left. Yep. And what about his sons? Um. Oh, and some of his sons will be taken his way, away yeah. as well. Will be taken captive. And then we learned that there was something <clears throat> odd that, uh, at least it was odd to me. Hezekiah responded to it, uh, Isaiah's um, <coughs> word on that. This, was, this is where I, I, I struggled because I couldn't understand why he would do that. Where he had said, uh, where he had said that the word of the Lord is good, because he thought, for there will be peace and truth in my days. And was there peace and truth in his days? Truth in his days was for that... Judah. Yep, yeah, for Judah. Yes. So God had already told God had promised him earlier that he would have more life, and that he would have when he was ill, and God healed him, and that. <laughs> You know, he wouldn't see this terrible thing coming upon them. I thought that was a little bit selfish of him. <laughs> Covering up his stupidity for showing up, showing off all his wealth to the enemy, basically. <laughs> but that's my humble opinion. Okay, very good. So now we go into uh, <clears throat> chapter 7. So... What do we, what do we find here? Did I say that right? 40. Did I say that correctly? Oh, chapter 40. <laughs> Sorry, everybody chapter out there in YouTube. Land, doing? I, yeah, I am, uh, I'm a, I have a little bit of a pain, less, lesser pain tolerance today than usual. <laughs> so if I misspeak, my uh, husband will correct me. Um, what do we, what did we see? In verse in one, it says, um, God says for, to comfort, oh, comfort his people. Mm -hmm. So what is, so after all of that death, destruction, judgment, all of that, what is God saying to his people besides comfort? Why, why is he saying to comfort themselves or to be comforted? Um, because war and warfare has ended, mm -hmm. and her iniquity has been removed. So, so she's paid for her sin. At the the time that Isaiah is seeing this, that the Lord says, "Okay, you've been punished enough." And then, um, so what do we what do we begin to see then? Begin to see the Lord's redemptive plan. Mm -hmm. As we were reading chapter 40, um, the important question that we always must ask when we're reading is, has this happened? Have we seen this happen? Or is this yet to be fulfilled? What do you say? If you look in the world around yeah. us, and then you read this. Personally, we've only read it that it has happened already, because there was a voice in the wilderness, and it talks about eventually the, the coming of the Lord Jesus. Okay, so... Um, and that has happened. Okay, so... Yes, but first coming. What about the warfare that is spoken of? I don't that the warfare, the warfare has hasn't ended yet for Israel. Correct. So that means that it's not it's only partially fulfilled what is spoken here. <clears throat> so we did a little word study while we were going because it says and I don't know about you, but when I read chapter 40 of Isaiah, I can hear Handel's Messiah and the glory, the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. 
Yeah. yeah. Yes. And that's where he took the text he took for that, for the Daniel's Messiah. <clears throat> every valley, every valley shall be exalted. Yeah. So <laughs> this is where I got uh, confused. Okay, so let's get it worked out. Because I didn't understand. It says a voice is calling out, and then in six it says the voice says, and I didn't understand if it's not the Lord speaking, then who is it? Okay, a voice is calling. Clear the way for who? The Lord in the wilderness. Yes, in the wilderness. So there's a place and a person and an action that's required. And make smooth mm -hmm. where? Uh, in the desert, a highway for our God. Okay, so make a highway for our God. <clears throat> okay, so what did we learn then in verse, that was verse 3. And um, <clears throat> what, did we, what did we learn in verse 5 then? We did a little word study. I wonder if we can, uh, if we can, uh, I'm going to bring that up on here so everybody in the world who's watching this can see it um, i gotta go oh okay jamie's coming okay okay see you in a, yeah come back don't shut it off just shut no, your uh, here, go. yeah okay so i'm looking up isaiah um 40 in the blue letter bible Verse five. okay so just whoops Okay, yes, okay. So now I got to share the screen with everyone so everyone can see it. <clears throat> Where is it? There it is. Okay, the Blue Letter Bible is a wonderful tool that's on the internet. My screen share is loading. Is it there? There. Okay, so there it is. So now I, I'm not looking at, okay, I'm sorry, everybody. I'm still working on the New American Standard uh, 35. That's the Bible I have. We got our studies in ESV. I don't really care for the ESV. I haven't got cared for it yet. Okay, so here we are. <clears throat> so it says, Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all flesh will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Bum, bum. That's how handle goes. So what we do is we click on this link here. Don't go over to tools because you'll end up uh, going a long way. Okay, so here's what we find about the glory. The glory has a <clears throat> number reference that uh, um, Mr. Strong's uh, codified for us all so that we can learn. Now, this is the Hebrew. So, okay, I'm going to pop this open. There's what it is. There's what it looks like in the original text. And we go over here. And we find out all the etymology. Well, let's look and see where it comes from. 3513. Because the etymology, where does this word come from? It comes from Kabad. And it is uh, it is translated as honor, glorify, honorable. And also, this was interesting to me, heavy, hardened, glorious, sore, made heavy. Okay, all of those things. And the outline of biblical usage, which of course helps us establish context to put the meaning of the word back into the text. To be heavy, weighty, grievous, hard, rich, honorable, glorious, burdensome, honored. So all of that is the, the, uh, the the old word that that the one that we were looking at comes from so carrying some weight um you know that's what we say about people who who um have achieved st uh certain things or certain knowledge in life we um we consider them to have weighty opinions okay so i'm going to go back to the word that we were looking at okay so so here is our word translates, the King James um, uh, translates it as glory, honor, glorious, gloriously. And I know before I started studying the Bible, I always wondered what that word glory, because you find that lots of times when you're reading, what is they really talking about? What is the glory of the Lord? Well, it's the abundance, riches, honor, splendor, glory, honor, dignity, reputation, reverence. 
properly weight. And in this, okay, in the original thing, it was kind of a negative, but in this, it's a good sense. It's a good sense that they're talking about. Okay, so we, why do we do that? Well, we take that and put that back into the text. So what does it say? Let, uh, I'm in verse four. And let the rough ground become a plain and the rugged terrain a broad valley. And then there's a time uh, word. Then the glory, the majesty, the weightiness, the honor of the Lord will be revealed and all flesh will see it together. Now, and it says, for the Lord of the mouth, the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Okay. Um, so we did a study in this. So Bob, let's look at our, our, um, at our study. Um, and for us, Where did we study that? Oh, I wrote it down. Okay. <clears throat> Page seven. Yes. Good. Thank you. Uh, page six and page seven. It said, do a word study on the Hebrew word for glory. So we just did that perfunctorily quickly. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so what did we learn about marking those references? as we saw them. What about that glory? Well, he will be revealed mm -hmm. and he'll come with might and with his rewards. Mm -hmm. Very good. We also looked, and I'm going to look over here. I'm sorry, I'm going over here. It, it says all flesh will see it. So what does that mean? Is there anybody left out? Everybody. <clears throat> nope. Good. Good. Everybody, Jew and Gentile alike. I'm going back to my uh, share screen here. Because the thing that we also, uh, even without <clears throat> even without studying in, the, in our workbook, uh, the Lord brought this to m this uh, text to mind. And it's John chapter one. And it talks about, what does it talk about? It talks about the word being God and with God in the beginning, creating things. And in him was light, life and the life was the light of men. <clears throat> and then what does it say? <clears throat> it says. Talks about John. Yes. John who? Which John? John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. And what did he come for? To be a voice calling in the wilderness. Yes. He, he, yes, he came to testify about the light that all might believe through what he said. He wasn't the light, but he testified about it. <clears throat> we go on to, I'm just skimming through mm -hmm. this, although it's really good for everybody to go back to this and read it and read it out loud. It's wonderful. I memorized the whole thing, <clears throat> chapter one, one time. Okay, so what does it say here? And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw his what? Glory. And what was that glory? Glory like? as the only, the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. So <clears throat> if we put this back, into our our study as we were learning what do we find then how do we okay so i don't know i guess i'm i want I, without saying it i, I want to know how isaiah's prophecy we could see it being revealed through this just this passage Well, the word, the prophecy became flesh and dwelt among us. So the glory is full of grace 
and truth. And whose glory is so it? The glory of the Lord. It's God's glory. The Lord's glory is full mm -hmm. of grace and truth. Good. Okay, so uh, we did more cross-referencing. We went to Malachi chapter 3, uh, verse 1, and Malachi 4, verses 5 to 6. I'm going to pull those up on my Blue Letter Bible here. Okay. Whoops. Everything just went crazy on my desktop here. All right. <clears throat> So here we are in Malachi. So what do we learn in Malachi 1? Whoops, am I in the right place? Malachi, no, I'm supposed to be Malachi 3, sorry. Sorry about that, everybody. Okay, what does it say in verse 1? Of 1 or 3? Yeah. Right here. In, can you see it on the screen? He said he's going to send the messenger, God's messenger, and he will clear the way before God. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. And the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. Yes, so the Lord of hosts says... <clears throat> that that glorious one is coming and God's message coming to clear the way yes if clear we go way. over to Isaiah whoops let me see if I can find this how do I get over there um, I have to go down sorry about your eyes everybody oh there's a place where I can just do the next chapter but I can't see it oh there it is next chapter <clears throat> okay, and uh, let's look down here in Malachi, in verses 4 to 5. What did Malachi prophesy about <clears throat> this coming? That he was going to send the prophet Elijah to clear the way. Mm -hmm. And what is that prophet Elijah going to do? He's going to prophesy about the coming of the great and terrible day and judgment. Mm -hmm. So who did we find fulfilled this prophecy then, Bob? John the Baptist. Very good. What was his message? And John. Prepare the way of the Lord. And there was something else he said to do. He was, a, he was an unlikely looking, wacko looking character even in his day. Uh, let's see. Let's see. He was calling for people to he was calling for them to repent yes to turn away from their sins and turn to God right <clears throat> and to repent so how do we understand that this prophecy uh, from the gospels that we looked at and we looked at Matthew chapter 3 verses 1 to 3 Mark chapter 1 verses 1 to 3 Luke chapter 3, verses 4 to 6, and John 1, 23. How do we come to the conclusion that the messenger in the wilderness spoken of by Malachi and Isaiah was John the Baptist? As the scripture says, as prophesies by Isaiah. Okay, so so those um, gospel accounts confirm that John the Baptist was he who was the messenger in the wilderness calling people to repent. Good, good. Okay, so if we go back to Isaiah and we look up in verse 9 through 11, 
<clears throat> what is the message there? Oh. There will be good news. Mm -hmm. And the Lord will come with my ruling mm -hmm. arm and I'll bring a reward. His reward is like with a him, shepherd yes. to the fly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And his reward is with him. Um, is this something that is has been fulfilled as yet? Um, the Lord coming with probably might. not, maybe partially, but yeah, yeah, maybe partially, but yeah. not in the physical realm of a king on the throne as yet. Now, I would say, of course, for those of us who are believers, he is ruling on the throne of our hearts, and uh, it's a spiritual kingdom, but the physical, actual kingdom has not um, been fulfilled yet. And I really like this. It says, do not fear. How many times did we read in this chapter, do not fear? I didn't mark them. You didn't mark that. Well, I, I, it didn't matter how much we did. It says, do not fear. <laughs> and if we, if we take that um, as God's word, we shouldn't... Um, shouldn't fear. Okay. So if we look then through uh, verses 12 through uh, 31, which is the end of the chapter, what is the main topic? What is the feature? What do we learn here? Well, the Spirit of the Lord is directing and they were and he's and the Lord is above all the earth and all the nations. Mm -hmm. Because <clears throat> he is this, the Holy One. The Holy One of Israel. You know, that phrase to me, <clears throat> that phrase to me was becoming more and more precious as we were studying this passage. The Holy One of Israel that we who believe in Jesus the Christ, the Son of God, are grafted in and worship the Holy One of Israel. The Holy One of Israel. <clears throat> and when you study historically what that means, that is the God who rescued Daniel from the lion's den and kept Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, their Babylonish names, um, safe in the fiery furnace and that is the god who smote the egyptians with all kinds of plagues so that the pharaoh would let the people go he's the same god that opened up <clears throat> the sea so that they could pass through on dry land and this is who we worship the holy one of israel to me that was very weighty with glory this is about the glory of the Lord. Um, we see that there are certain things, certain aspects of God in this passage. Let's bring out some and say what verse we find him in. Oh, he is the creator. I remember seeing that somewhere. Mm -hmm. mm. 26. Yeah. Mm-hmm talks about creating the stars and the heavenly bodies. What else does it, 28 says. God is the everlasting Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. Mm -hmm. And what do we find out about this God in at the end of 28. He doesn't become tired or weary. Mm -hmm. And his understanding is inscrutable. Okay, so did that so he bring... knows all about... Yes, did that bring to mind 
was it Elijah and the prophets of Baal? And the taunt that Elijah gave to the prophets of Baal? Well, where is your God? May I call louder. Maybe he's asleep. Or maybe he's gone on a long journey. Is that what God the Almighty is like at all? It's not like the idols. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> what, um, what else is a very precious part of this um, chapter in prophecy that follows this? What are the benefits of uh, serving well, him? Of all the nations, which are nothing before God, he chose Jacob. Mm-hmm. He changed it to Israel. Mm -hmm. uh, and even though people don't see it, Jacob is the, the beginning of all of Israel. Mm -hmm. What are the had end? his father, Isaiah, and but uh, what do you call it? Abraham, God's friend. Okay, we're that's in chapter 41. Let's go back to verse 29 because or of 29 of um, chapter 40 and talk about what we find here. So God himself doesn't become weary or tired and he knows everything there is, n there is to know. What does he do for those who are his? He gives them power. And? And to him who lacks might, he increases power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Power and strength. He gives strength to the weary. Boy, I'm feeling weary today. <laughs> I didn't sleep very well last night because of this whole pain thing going on uh, in life. Um, but it says here, though youths grow weary and tired the, and vigorous young men stumble badly, Yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. <clears throat> that immediately sent me to the passage in my mind where Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For my and I will yoke is light rest. and my burden is because my easy. burden, my burden is, is easy and my yoke is no my yoke well my yoke is easy and my burden is light and you will find rest for your souls yeah so um let me just look at my notes here and see what else we want to cover in that chapter okay god himself so um this if you've done any reading or studying in the psalms also you know it, it's the psalms which are before in the history of Israel, uh, written before Isaiah. Well, in the Psalms, it's written that the Lord, why do the nations rage in vain? The Lord sees them and laughs, for he knows their day is coming. So, you know, all of this turmoil and whatnot that's going on among the nations, the Lord laughs at that. He is the creator of the ends of the earth. So um, we read in verses 18 to 26, I'm going back a little bit, about the foolishness of idols. Because God just blows on them and they're gone. They're gone. They mean nothing. Absolutely nothing. Now, verse 27 says, Why do you say, O Jacob, and assert, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and justice due me escapes the notice of my God. And when I read that, I thought about how many of the Jewish people who have who who are still alive, or who had parents, or grandparents, or loved ones, and families who endured um, the Holocaust. Saying, uh, why doesn't God see this? Why is, why? Why is justice 
escaping us. I just dropped that in there because it's something to think of. <clears throat> what do we know, though, when, when think, we ask that question? Because they're thinking in a human knowledge and not a godly knowledge. And what was all of the previous part of Isaiah about? The judgment for idolatry mm -hmm. and not following. He yes. Hearing and not hearing and seeing and not seeing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for me anyway, um, all of that previous part of Isaiah really brought me up short in the sense that it, today, if you hear God's voice, don't be rebellious. You hear his voice, do what he calls you to do. What do you mean? Pardon me? Were you going to say something? I didn't hear it. Uh, explain what you mean then. Oh, well, oh, well what did I just say? <laughs> I got sidetracked by what you were saying. You were saying. brought up short. I was brought I was brought up short <clears throat> in the sense that um, no one escapes ju the judgment of the Lord. No one. There are different kinds of judgment, um, but no one escapes. So it brought brought me up short to. Keep short accounts with God, let's just say, as some pastors have said in the past. Okay, so the promise that ends chapter 40 is Wait for the Lord, mm -hmm. you'll gain strength, mm -hmm. you'll fly like eagles, mm -hmm. not get tired, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we'll walk and not become weary. Mm -hmm. So that's a truly blessed. Good, very good. Okay, so let's go on to chapter 41, shall we? What's this chapter about? <clears throat> this one gave me puzzles. Puzzles? Yeah, who is it speaking to? I am he. Well, who is it speaking to, first of all? Well, I think he's speaking to Israel, but he's talking about those that don't live on the mainland. Yeah, he's talking. What's the specific word in the ESV that you have? The coastlands. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's about the coastlands. So I, I was just thinking about the map, the, the map, to think about the coastlands. What, what do we see? Okay, so <clears throat> verse 8 starts with a but, and the word but will show us a contrast. So before <clears throat> but, what, what contrast? What is the thing that's going to be contrasted here? This is where he's talking about he chose Israel. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. but who who is it talking about? Israel is God's servant. Mm -hmm. Jacob was the chosen one. Mm -hmm. And they all are descendants of Abraham, God's friend. Okay, but it's speaking as a warning. <clears throat> from five to seven and then there's the but which is what everything that you talked about so what is it from five who is it from five to seven what are we talking about here well there's those that are not chosen what are they doing? They're making idols. Mm -hmm. That's so. 
it took me a little while to figure whether I, I put, okay, so here's what we were taught when we were studying, learning to study, that sometimes a thought will come to your mind and you're not quite sure whether what you're examining is what that thought that came to your mind is. So in my Bible, I used pencil because I can erase it. And I wrote the word idols with a question mark because I wasn't quite sure whether they were talking about idols or not. But then that goes back from five to seven of 41, <coughs> goes back to chapter 40, verses 18 to 20. So it's talking about craftsmen, crafting with gold and silver and fashioning things of metal. And if you're too poor, you make it out mm. of wood that doesn't rot, right? <clears throat> Good. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, <coughs> so the Lord is saying something to these people and who, who, who is he? What is he doing in verse th two? In verse what? Two of 41. So the Lord is talking about all the people, everyone from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then when he gets to chapter or verse eight, he says, but I chose these to be my chosen people. Yes. Yes. So he's Not talking about the you. nations, the nations, all the people, the Gentiles, all of them. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And, um, Explain now. Did you notice this? Uh, verse four. It says um, that he says of himself, "I am the first, and with the last, I am He." What does it say in your text? I, the Lord, am the first, and with the last, I am He. Yeah. So, did that remind you of anything in the uh, the Book of Revelation? Um, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning yes. and the end. Yes. Who was it speaking in um, in the Revelation? Jesus is speaking. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I wanted to point something out that really made me very, very, very encouraged and happy. <clears throat> and uh, I can't remember if we talked about this when we were studying the books of Peter or whether we were uh, talking about this when we were stu studying in the books of Romans. Because <clears throat> I wanted to point something out here. Because we were starting at verse 8, where you were talking, um, but you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen. So we marked that chosen with a special marking. Descendant of Abraham, my friend. <clears throat> when we were doing those studies... Was Abraham a Jew from Judah? No, because only the Jews or the Israelites uh, come through Jacob. And Jacob yes. was a grandson of Abraham. Okay, so let's read this again. He, but he you... was the chosen grandson. Yes. But you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, descendant of Abraham. What is Abraham called? My friend. Yes, God's friend. You, whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called from its remotest part and said to you, you are my servant. Who is that talking about? Mm -hmm. Who is it? What's that? Because I think it's referring back to verse 2, that Abraham was the one chosen from the east, aroused okay. from the east. Could be, could be. I see it a little different way. <clears throat> Descendant of Abraham, my servant, you whom I've taken from the ends of the earth and called from its remotest parts, and said to you, you are my servant. I have chosen you and not rejected you. Who, who else could that be? Jesus. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. 
I was yeah. confused with this. Part. Okay, so I, uh, you weren't here, Adrian, in the room when we, I don't remember whether it was when we were studying Peter, when we were studying Romans or what we were studying, but we learned something about Abraham. Abraham was not a Jew. He was before Jew. Oh, Abraham he was, a, was Gentile. a Gentile. That's right. So when he says descendant of Abraham, Abraham was given a promise by God that he would have descendants more numerous than the stars from every tribe and in, how did it go? In every tribe and tongue and nation. So who could these descendants of Abraham, my friend, who you who I'm, have taken from the ends of the earth and called from its remotest parts and said to you, you are my, cho uh, my servant, I've chosen you and not rejected you. Who could refer that be? to us as Gentiles? Could refer us to believers. Us believers could refer to us because now <clears throat> i can't remember okay so you have to look do a little study on abraham and find out where his name shows up in the new testament because uh, i didn't write that down beside my beside my text okay so what is the promise i have chosen you and not rejected you what is it that god is saying that he is with you mm -hmm. do not be anxious I will strengthen you and I'll uphold you mm -hmm. my, with my right hand. Yes. Now we learned somewhere else in another study about this topic of God's righteous right hand. Um, <clears throat> for those of you who haven't studied that yet, well, then you just have to go <laughs> and do some more study because we did find that, but I'm not going to go into it here. But if you have studied it, it should make your ears tingle a little. Uh, okay. So what, okay, so this, this chapter was so precious to me, was so precious to me in the week. Um, verse 11 and 12 and 13. Keep, yeah. Read it for me, Adrian. It's 11 to 13? Mm-hmm. Okay. Behold, all those who are angered at you will be shamed and dishonored. Those who contend with you will be as nothing and will perish. You will seek those who quarrel with you but will not find them. Those who war with you will be as nothing and non-existent. For I am the Lord your God, who upholds your right hand, who Read says again. to you, do not fear, I will help you. Yes. So to me, because as believing Gentiles, we are grafted in uh, to the promises to Abraham, I took that as a very encouraging word. God is here to help us. God will help us. Okay, now. Uh, so who is, okay, so we were learning different things. Who else do we find out that the Lord is? If we were going to say, what do we find out about God? Verse 14. He's our Redeemer and the Holy One of Israel. Yes, the Holy One of Israel. So we mentioned this. I don't know if you were in the room here or you were going doing your other thing. Um, I just found it. Um, I find it awesome that that's God <laughs> and that we're grafted in. The Holy One of Israel who did all those things in history. Okay, so uh, we find out that some things are going to be happening then. Um, uh, and we looked at uh, 17 through 20. Um would you say from your study that 17 to 20 has happened yet? So what what is happening in those in that? Mm. Uh, that that's when the ground and earth and the water is either destroyed or greatly harmed. Are you sure? Yeah. Well, that's what it says in verse 17, 17. But then it goes into verse 18. And he says, and God says he will open the rivers on bare on the bare heights and springs in the midst of the valleys. Yes, for who? For his chosen. Well, what does it say in verse who is it? In oh, verse 17? Let me the one up. Yeah. Who are they? 
What's their condition? Those who have sinned. What does it say in verse 17? The afflicted and needy. And what are they seeking? Water. But what is there? None. And then what does, in their parched with thirst, and what does the Lord say? He will answer them. Mm -hmm. This is the God of Israel. So this is more speaking to Israel than... It's speaking to the those who have no water. They're afflicted and needy. They have no water. And they're parched with thirst. Now, um, I mean, in... Okay, so what came to me as we were as I was doing my study that, you know, perhaps, and I've, there was a, oh, when I was a girl, it's still around. When I was a girl, I had a devotional um, guide called streams in the desert. And it was written by a lady. And, and, and uh, so a lot of these um, topics were kind of spiritualized, you know, so that uh, Jesus said, oh, um, from him will he, he will give them living water. Right. So I could spiritualize it in a way. But this is talking about, and, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Because, you know, Isaiah is kind of poetic in a way. But what is God going to do for the poor, afflicted, and needy who are thirsty? Big rivers, spring. Yeah. The, yeah. Give them water. Mm-hmm. Yes, he's going to give them water and cause all of these things to grow in the wilderness. So it, it mentions acacia, myrtle, olive tree, juniper, placed in where? Desert. Yes. And why is he doing that? Verse 20. Because he is the Holy One of Israel. Yes, and but there's a purpose for him to do it. They will see and recognize. Yes, so that the people will see and recognize and consider and gain insight as well that God has done this. Okay, so then there's, <laughs> we're just about finished here. The, I found this kind of unusual. Um, verses 21 to 24. What do we learn here? If you got a case, bring it before them. Yeah. Make your argument. Yeah. Make your argument. And then, so, okay. So this, all right. So I'm associated with people who think they know what's going to happen in the next five years. And they're pretty convinced oh, yeah. what what's going to happen in the next five years. And what is, what is, uh, God and it says that the Lord, the King of Jacob. What does He say about that? About what people are saying? Let them bring forth and declare to us they what is going to take place. As for the former events, declare what they were. Why? That we may consider them and know their outcome, or announce to us what is coming. Yes. Okay. Clear the things that are going to come afterward that we may know that you are gods. Indeed. Yes, okay. God's in the with a small g, right? Yeah. Indeed, do good or evil that we may anxiously look about us and fear together. Woo! We we you're gods, you're saying these things. Woo! Let us all get scared. Spooky wookie. What does God say to them in verse 24? Behold, you are of no account, and your work work amounts to nothing. He who chooses you is an abomination. So is is it God that's choosing these people? No. No. It's anybody who's following them. Who are the who who are these people? Um false prophets. Yes. So it, you know, as we're going down and we're um reading through these segments, our new inductive study Bibles, whatever version they are in, or our um what do they call those? The worksheets. Observation worksheets. Sorry. <laughs> they have a bolded uh, number for uh, the beginning of a new segment. So this whole segment mm -hmm. here from 21 to 24, I kind of took as God taunting the false prophets. 
Now, see, this is, I got that too. But then in my, in, but in the back of my head, does God taunt or does he, you know? In the Psalms, it says the Lord, okay, so why do the nations rage in vain? And the kings of earth devises an evil thing. The Lord laughs. Ha <laughs> ha. For he knows their day is coming. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't put that together with the, with my thought. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So God is saying, interesting... God is saying, okay, okay. You think you know so much about the future and the past. Uh, tell me about it. You know, what do you know about what happened before? How do you know what's happening in the future? You know, we want to know that you're gods, that you're trustworthy to believe, right? Do good or evil, whatever you want to do. We'll sit around going, ah, oh, spooky, wooky, scary, wary, right? But God says, and this kind of balances uh, with um, what he said in chapter 40, you know, verses 18 to 20 about about these people or these oh yeah prophets. they this is where they he wants to know if they're gonna liken them to an idol yeah 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 how, how dare you right how dare yeah. you and he calls and he and he says that whoever chooses those people are an abomination so when you see that word abomination in the bible that that indicates that that makes the Lord sick. You know? And more than angry. That's an abominable thing. Pay attention every time you run against that word. That's probably the worst thing. And you don't ever want to be unknown or be following something that God falls at, calls an abomination. Okay, so uh, verses 25 to the end. one from the north mm -hmm. so we're so when we are um studying we make note of places geographical areas so from the north i've aroused one from the north and he has come from the rising of the sun he'll call on my name so is this a good guy or a bad guy i'd say this is a good guy yeah well if he calls on the name of the lord he's a good guy mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. And he will come upon rulers as upon mortar, even as the potter treads clay. Who declared this from the beginning that we might know, or from former times that we might say, he's right. So this is the contrast between false prophets and what God has already said. Surely there was no one who declared. Surely there was no one who proclaimed. Surely there was no one who heard your words. Formally, now who is this? Who, who okay, so then now this is if you notice this, <coughs> our English version has quotation marks. Formerly, I said to Zion, Behold, here they are, and to Jerusalem, I will give what a messenger of good news. Mm -hmm. But when I look, there's no one, and if there's no counselor among mm -hmm. them. Who, if I ask, can give an answer? Behold, what does it say? Read it out loud, Bob. All of them are false. Their words are worthless. Their molten images are wind and emptiness. Exactly. It's so all that, chasing after the wind. Yep, that's Ecclesiastes. Vanities. That's Ecclesiastes, right? <clears throat> Very good. Yeah. We learn in this chapter that God is sovereign over the waters, right? He's sovereign over the growing mm -hmm. plants. So <clears throat> that kind of brought me up short too, because people can do wicked things and pollute and corrupt and all of that and make things miserable. Excuse me. But ultimately, God is sovereign over all of that. And he constantly is saying, don't be afraid. Trust me. Trust me. 
Okay, so he clearly points out here that these idols, these false prophets, are of no account. They're worthless and they're empty. Now, it's pretty serious when God's people who brought them with a, a, a you know, he brought them into Egypt to save them and save many alive, and then he brought them out of Egypt by a great and mighty hand that they would turn to idols from the nations around them. That's pretty serious. So when I... And he knew... And he knew that they would. Yes, well. yes, yes. He that's that why. Would. That's why he sent a redeemer. That's why he sent mm -hmm. a redeemer. So at this point, God is telling them that they're about to go into captivity to Babylon. Would they stay there in Babylon? Uh. They might have, but God told them that they were coming out. So, Yeah, God gave them a future and a hope that uh, they wouldn't be left there in, in captivity in Babylon. <clears throat> so this verse 25 tells, I'm reading from my text here, sorry. Uh, verse 25 tells of one from the north whom God aroused, stirred to come against the rulers and nation. <clears throat> God alone declares what is to come. To comfort his people. So <clears throat> I guess the cautionary tale for all of us is to know God's word, what his prophets have said, know his law, know personally and receive the gift of redemption that he's given and not listen to these false idols. There's so many in the world. Like people just, uh, you just pick up your your uh, your newspaper and there's your horoscope. You know, it was very shocking to me to see a person who had been in a Christian church at our local fair who was offering tarot card readings. That okay, that's scary. It was terrible uh, for me. That I didn't even know what to do except pray. Um. But that really, you know, and there's a lot of people who are lost, who do not want to submit to the Holy One of Israel. So they, because they want to believe that humanity can redeem itself, that they can redeem themselves, that they can make it right with God. Um, they've been sold that lie through schools and through false religions. It's very sad. So we know how to pray for those people. What compares, what or who compares to God? Nothing and no one. And where are we going to learn more about who he is? In the Bible. As we're studying God's word. Very good. Very good. Oh, okay, I think that uh, that we're probably at a good time to wrap this uh, message up but I gotta go I must go to Isaiah at a glance and I must make that into a share screen right here um, Isaiah at a glance and here we go so chapter 40 how are we going to call this hold on I have that marked down um God comforts those who wait. Oh, good one. Mm -hmm. Those who wait just um, uh, blindly? No, those who wait. I couldn't find the words I wanted after that. How's that look? <clears throat> God comforts those, comforts and strengthens, right? Yes. those who wait on him okay so what do we uh okay and i'm going to write something else in there i'm going to say idols are nothing good. okay good okay now 41 chapter 41 how are we mm -hmm. going to say that um i have holy one of israel is the redeemer oh good 
holy, oops, holy one of Israel. I'm going to put the first and the last because that kind of uh, was in there. Holy one of Israel. What did you say? It's the redeemer. Is the redeem. Oops. Redeemer. False prophets are nothing. Very good. Good study today. Very good study. <clears throat> All right. So I'm going to stop this sharing. Bob, will you close us in prayer today? Our Father, our Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, we come into your presence and seeking your direction and guidance and blessing. Oh, Father, we think of you, the glory that you show us in grace and mercy. And Father, we thank you that you had a plan from the beginning. And Father, that you chose certain people, and especially Jacob, to lead a nation to show you of, of what you wanted to, people to do. But Father, we ask that mercy and grace that that even when they failed, you were still their redeemer. Mm -hmm. Oh, Father, you had consequences for their actions and you have consequences for our actions when we do not obey. So, Father, now as we uh, depart from this class and we go on our ways and, and we thank you that Jesus Christ redeemed us by the blood shed on the cross Oh, Father, we thank you that we too can come into your presence and be redeemed by the blood of Jesus. For we do pray and give you praise for this day in his holy name. We thank you, the Holy One of Israel. Amen. Amen. All right, you folks, I'm just going to pause the recording. And uh, next week, what are we studying? Oh, my goodness. I think it's 41 and 42. Oh, no, 42 and 43. 42 and 43? I think so. Oh, 42 through yeah. 44. Okay. Okay, so we've got... So don't let it rest. <laughs> I, 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 I figured I better get started early. <laughs> okay, everybody. We'll see you the next one. <clears throat>